Hi everyone, and welcome back to Mixar 64 Lego and more. And if you are new to this channel, I'm so glad you are here joining us. Uh, but in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys everything you need to know for beginner tutorial on Bricklink Studio. It's going to be good, let's get straight into it. So to begin, we're welcomed with this screen. Um, this shows a few different things. Um, here you have your recent creations, um, and you can also create a new uh, document or open an existing file. So let's get started by showing you guys the basics of this program. On the left here you can see you've got all your different bricks and pieces, um, your parts basically. Uh, there are a few options here, you've got your colour options, um, you can actually put on uh, decorated parts or not, um, and then this button just shows how many different uh, pieces you see. Um, you can also drag this um, to see more pieces or less, I like to keep it smaller um, so you have the workspace a little bit bigger. Now over up the top here you can see um, some group categories um, of different parts. You can use this to search for parts as well. Um, I tend to not use this, I tend to just search for the piece instead. Then along the top here we've got a bunch of different settings um, and menus. We'll check out some of them in a bit. But uh, over the top right hand side we've got um, our account settings and some export settings uh, and then all our colour options um, and then uh, the list of parts within our model. So let's get straight into how this works. Uh, you're going to zoom uh, in and out with two fingers on the uh, trackpad or just your scroller on your mouse if you're using one. Um, I tend to probably use a trackpad more um, since I'm on my laptop but uh, you can see me rotating now. Um, that is just a uh, left uh, clicker on the mouse or just holding down on your trackpad. So you've got zoom and rotate and then the third movement is a uh, pan or just a movement across sideways. So um, that's just done by holding down the space bar and then moving it that way. So they're the three main uh, movements within this software. Um, and yeah, pretty easy to handle after you've used it enough um, and you, you'll get pretty good at it. Um, but uh, yeah, really great to just see any angles you need for your build. So now let's get into looking at some parts. So you can click the parts from the parts menu and simply drag them in. You can see me just moving this part around, pretty simple. Um, and then when you place a piece, um, it will actually automatically clone itself. Um, yeah, I'll just do this again to show you. Um, you can see it just clones. Um, as soon as you choose any piece, it will do that. Um, now, to stop this, simply press V to go back to your general select tool, um, or you can press delete. Uh, but yeah, this clone tool helps if you want uh, more than one piece, um, so straight up with that, that's cool. Um, and then to get back to the clone setting, um, that's just a simple C on the keyboard. Now one great thing about this is the snap tool um, and I have this on all the time. You can see up in the top menu, uh, but if I take this piece off, you actually notice it snaps back into place, um, snaps to the studs basically. Um, and if we turn this setting off, um, it's just up there, um, you'll notice it doesn't snap into place. Now I would definitely suggest having this on because it really helps um, with quick building and precise building as well. And then up here we also have Collision. Now, Collision is just an on or off uh, menu as well. Um, and you can notice if I have this off, um, a piece will actually collide with other pieces and it will actually go inside as you can kind of see here. Um, and if you have Collision on, um, it will show kind of this transparent uh, view um, of the piece that is colliding with other pieces. Um, so again, I'd suggest to have this on uh, always so you can see if pieces are colliding. So guys, now I'll demonstrate the hinge tool. Um, by doing this, you can select the part you want to hinge uh, and just press H on your keyboard as a keyboard shortcut. Then you can see me basically just moving it around here. Um, and yeah, that is how you can hinge parts, either clips and bars or other hinged elements um, yeah basically click the um, H um, key on your keyboard um, or you can use the hinge uh, menu up in the top left as well 
Now to select different parts, basically when you hover over them, they'll uh, highlight uh, with this blue border. Um, and then you can press command and select different parts if you do wish. Um, and you also notice they highlight in the parts list um, over on the right. Um, and basically, yeah, then you can select by just dragging a bunch of pieces uh, or a section um, if you wanna delete or edit that section. One other awesome feature that uh, Bricklink Studio has is hiding pieces. And you'll notice if I uh, select the wheel here um, and then right click and press hide, um, you'll notice it hides. And up in the right here, um, there's this little part which shows you that the pieces are hidden. Now they're not deleted, they still are there basically. They just go completely invisible and they are hidden. Um, so you can select any parts to hide and then they'll add up basically. And you can press show all to bring them back. Now we'll look at colouring. Um, to colour parts basically simply click on it and you can come over to the colour palette. You can search for any colour. Um, if I search sand red let's say um, and then it'll pop up and you can yeah basically change the colour of any part. And when you do add in a new part, um, sorry new colour, um, you'll notice it comes in the content colours and that's any colours that are in your build right now. So you can see the list of different colors here for this uh, bus um, and then you can also add in favorite colors as well. So guys, really that is the basics to Bricklink Studio. Um, I've gone through a bunch of the different settings and things that you can learn to use as a beginner. Um, but one other thing I do just want to say is uh, the model info. Um, you can see, you go up to the top a model menu and then click model info at the bottom. Uh, and then this comes up with your part list. Um, you can also see the total parts um, and different information in here about the actual model itself. Um, which is really great. I've used this as well um, if you do want to see parts in a build or something like that. So um, this also has physical information which is awesome so you can see you know weight and sizing here. Now guys one other thing I will just touch on is stability. Uh, I didn't go through this but um, that's this little setting up here and if you click this this shows basically how stable your model is. Um, this is great for really larger builds I guess with a little small bus like this you can see there's not too many issues um, and they'll show up red um, so you can see the wheels are highlighted red that's because all the weights on the wheels obviously um, so yeah with larger builds stability can be useful um, because it actually will help you if you want to build it in real life afterwards and that covers most of the things up here you'll notice render and instruction um, I'll go through them in future videos but there is also mosaic here um, I don't really know how to fully use this either um, but it's pr it's pretty simple um, you can go in here and select uh, images or add in your own and stuff like that and you can cr actually create your own Lego mosaic well guys thank you for watching uh, this video if you were new to Bricklink Studio um, I hope this helped you um, and you learned a few things about the basics um, of using the program um, I absolutely love it um, I use it for most of my models now um, and I hope this helped you so thank you everyone for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one.